Let's look at the dynamics between discovery and belief, the difference between discovery and belief, because again, natural law is capable of being discovered, understood, and harmonized with. Now, does that sound like a religion? Religion asks people to believe, accept, and do without question. What this is, is saying, this exists, you're bound by it, the best you can do is to understand its operation like you would understand gravity and therefore not just walk toward the edge of a 200 foot cliff that is bottomed, bottomed by jagged rocks. If you're intelligent and you understand how the law of gravity works, you won't do that behavior. Okay? Just like if you're intelligent and you understand how natural law works, you won't do certain behaviors to create a prison for the entire species, for your entire species. Unfortunately, humanity has not reached that level of consciousness yet. They are not at that level of co-creative intelligence to understand how these laws work and then align their behaviors to them. So natural law has nothing to do with religion. It's not a belief system. It's a science. It is a discoverable operation that is already in effect that we can either understand and align our behavior to or remain ignorant of and suffer as a result of that ignorance because it's already in effect and already has, an, has a binding effect upon you and your behaviors and everyone's. So when it comes to belief, and anybody that was trying to propagate a religion wouldn't put this slide up here, when it comes to natural law, it, is, it works just like gravity. So. The clown that's going to jump over the cliff saying, I don't believe in gravity, what's going to happen? Down he goes. Because belief is irrelevant. Because natural law does not care about you. It does not care about you. It is in effect, no matter what you do, deal with it. And people don't want to hear that. And I recognize this. I recognize I'm not telling anybody anything they want to hear. If I wanted to sell a lot of stuff, if I wanted to be real popular, I'd come up here and I'd tell you exactly what you want to hear, and then I'd be making $50,000 a presentation like Wayne Dyer does. Okay? And that is his fee. I know because I've actually had some people speak to his management. That's what, that's what a new age presenter gets. You know what I ask for? Zero. I don't even ask for a stipend. Because I don't want, I don't even care about fake money. I care about making real money. Real one eye. The word money is actually one eye. And people don't even, have said it a billion times in their life and never recognize what they're saying is one eye. And it's the symbol of the one eye which represents spiritual enlightenment is plastered all over the one dollar bill. Okay? Well, this is the one. See, I tell people, I'm a poor man when it comes to the fake money, but I'm very rich in the real stuff. The real thing, I have tons of. The fake stuff, I don't do so well with, and I don't care. It's not what I'm concerned about. I know it's fake. Okay? So, I don't ask for a stipend when I present. I, I tell whoever's setting up the presentation, pay for my travel and lodging. Hook me up with a dinner or whatever. That's it. I'll come out and speak anywhere. Okay? The point is, if I was trying to appeal to somebody's ego and what they wanted to hear, I would tell you your beliefs are very important. Your beliefs shape. And they, they do shape your reality. In a negative way, if you don't align yourself with truth and you want to stay attached to a belief system because you prefer it over what's real. Okay? So, when it comes to natural law, I'm not telling people don't believe in yourself. See, people will say, there's forms of belief that are good. Yeah, I acknowledge that. I understand that. Believe in yourself. Believe in your own ability to, to, to come to this understanding of, of information like this. But I'm explaining, when it comes to a law that is existent in the universe, your belief doesn't matter. It's irrelevant. The universe doesn't care what the, the, that, those parents at that picnic whose child just went over the cliff believed doesn't care whether that girl doesn't know what, how gravity works. It's going to have an effect. You act a certain way, like a computer. Boom! You put this in, 
Here's how you program this. That's what has to come out. Invariably. Invariably. It is nothing personal. Natural law is not a personal force. It is an impersonal force that every single mystery tradition and occult tradition that has actually wanted to share this knowledge with people has been telling people about and attempting to tell people about since time immemorial. It is an impersonal force. It does not care about you. It does not worry or care in the slightest bit whether you understand it or accept it or not. It is an effect. You are bound by it. the end and stop crying in your milk over it. That's it. No one wants to hear that. And I'm not so naive that I recognize people don't want to hear that, that I don't recognize that. I do recognize that. Believe me, I realize the wall I am up against in saying this. I get it fully, fully. If I wanted to blow smoke up people's rear ends, I'd come up here and I'd say, the universe cares about you and what you believe. And it's going to gauge that, it's going to, it's going to look at all that, and it's going to tabulate it, and it's going to say, well, what did he believe when he took this action? It doesn't care. It's not going to say that. It's going to say, is this what happened? Yes or no? Yes? Here's the result. That's it. Unwaveringly and invariably. The human ego has a hard time with that. There was a, some popular TV show, I don't even remember what it was, uh, Barb had downloaded it, and she was watching an episode, and it said, humanity's greatest fear is that truth is absolute. And I, I, I usually don't bother watching any television, okay? I, I, I have downloaded, I download a couple of shows to watch them because I, they're allegories, and I want to pick apart the allegory. But I wasn't even watching this one, but I heard it, I, my head snapped around. Whoa! That came through a network television show? How'd that happen? Humanity's greatest fear is that the truth is absolute. The ego has a hard time with the concept of any absolutes. It loves relativism. That's another part of the big trap of where we're at. Relativistic ideas. And especially when it comes to morality. We're going to talk about moral relativism. But the concept here is natural law does not require your belief to be in effect. No more than gravity requires your belief to be in effect. Okay? It need, that needs to be understood. Human belief is completely irrelevant when it comes to the existence and operation of natural law, just as it is irrelevant in relation to any of the other laws of nature such as gravity, inertia, momentum, thermodynamics, or electromagnetism. Similar, similar to such other phenomena of nature. The workings of natural law require no belief in order for them to be discovered and known. So what I'm saying is, your belief will not change natural law. But your inquiry into it can lead to an understanding of it. You can develop the knowledge of it if you are willing to open your mind and look at how these laws function. And what we're getting as a result of our disharmony with them. The philosopher Soren Kierkegaard said that there are two ways to be fooled. One is to believe what is not true. And the other is to refuse to accept what is true. Okay? So, believing in untrue notions, which is what religion is, all forms of it, all the, the five religions I posted at the beginning of the presentation. Organized cultural religion, money, scientism, politics, and the New Age movement. There's the world religions, folks. People think of religion as only the cultural religions. No, there's four other ones. One's called government and authority, okay? Or politics, whatever, however you want to name it. The other one, is money, finance. There's another religion. One of them is the New Age movement, and one of them is scientism, which I, I'm not going to refer to as real science because it is not. It is a belief system and a religion. So what Kierkegaard is saying here is you can believe things that aren't true, 
and that will hold you back. And you can refuse to accept what is true, and that will also hold you back. I say these are the only two ways that humanity ever creates self-inflicted suffering for itself. You want to know how suffering is created for the human species that it doesn't need to experience? We believe what's not true, we refuse to accept what is true. That's why self-inflicted suffering exists in our species. And if we, if we are to become wise, we need to stop doing both of those things, and then we'll stop creating suffering for ourselves.